Motorsport TV Live, brought to you by Motorsport Tickets, the dedicated motorsport experiences provider. Hello and welcome to Motorsport TV Live. I'm Chris McCarthy. Coming up on the show... We'll look back at the 2021 W Series, including a look at what's next for double champion Jamie Chadwick. We discuss the sausage curb Cota controversy, and we have insight from Autosport.com's Megan White. That's all coming up right here on Motorsport TV Live. The 2021 was an incredibly close battle in the W Series with the top two level on points going into the final race weekend of the season. But ultimately, it was the same result with Jamie Chadwick retaining her title. She admitted after that her second W Series championship was harder fought than in 2019, having been pushed all the way by fellow Brit Alice Powell. And that winning felt all the more sweeter because of it. We'll hear shortly from Autosport News editor Megan White about what's next for Chadwick. But before that, let's hear what she had to say about the win. To be honest, the whole season, it just felt like I was so hard, well, closely fought. And it was, yeah, one weekend I'd have an advantage, the next weekend Alice would be uh, ahead. And it would just be kind of ebbing and flowing the whole season. Whereas in 2019, I didn't really have that. And in 2019, it was only six races as well. So felt like I was able to get ahead at the beginning and then kind of just maintain it. And this season, it didn't feel like that at all. Every time I'd have a bit of momentum, it'd swing the other way. So yeah, it was definitely much tougher, I would say. Um, but yeah, obviously happy that we still managed to get the best result out of it. From a driving point of view, the big thing was the circuits we went to. Um, they were, in my opinion, the best circuits in the world, um, or some of them were. So yeah, to have the chance to go to those and race on those, those tracks was a big step up. But then, yeah, it's a really small... Uh, it sounds like a small thing, but after the weekend, the amount of you know attention that the series would get in comparison to 2019 was so much greater. And yeah, that really was a direct result of being a part of the Formula One package. Okay, it's maybe not the ideal situation to have a separate series for, for women, but in the long term, that won't be the case. And what the situation, in my opinion, is, is that they've done more, or what W Series has achieved overnight is more than you know anyone has managed to do for women in the sport. We've got yeah, 18 girls racing in these kind of Formula 3 level cars. Um, you know, it's an opportunity that I don't think any of us would have had without without the series. And it's created more professional racing opportunities for all of us. So from a yeah progression of women in motorsport point of view, I think it's been super successful. And I hope it can only go from strength to strength and the field can get stronger and stronger. And at some point, we won't need, there won't be a need for the W Series and we'll have, um, you know, men and women able to kind of compete in the same sort of, you know, ladder and feeder series that, that the men are doing. Obviously returning in 2021, it felt like an obvious choice because of the stakes and the fact it was on the Formula One package and the super license points. And I didn't quite have the budget together to, to progress into something like F3, but now I want to use and showcase W Series for what, you know, it is. And that is the platform and the springboard to kind of push you up into higher ranks so I'd like to to hope that the opportunities are there to do that and whilst nothing's being confirmed I think yeah it's very unlikely that that I'd return to W Series. In terms of what's next um it's weighing up the options I think the well the most sport fans will say why not F3 or F2 um and yeah we're looking at those options the difficulty with something like F3 is we're in November now and I've missed the test and I'm a bit late to the party to to try and push for a top team so we need to see what other opportunities there are available there. And yeah, outside of that, what, what the next obvious step is. But I think there's a good amount of um, opportunity now, um, particularly, like you said, with the Richard Mill thing as well, um, to, to hopefully have, um, you know, a good and exciting next year. At the moment, you know, the relationship I have with Williams, um, the focus is still a little bit more on Europe and seeing what opportunities are here. But I think what America offer and, you know, their ladder is a proven pathway. So it's nice to know that there could potentially always be an option available there that has a really good structure to it that, um, yeah, could be an option in the future. 
Well, plenty to cover and joining us now to go over Chad Wick's second W Series title and take a look at many of the other season's talking points is Autosport.com's news editor, Megan White. Uh, Megan, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the show. Obviously, we heard from Jamie Chadwick there retaining her championship title and did it in good style. Now, a worse result of sixth. Consistency was definitely the key to her winning, wasn't it? Yeah, hi, Chris. I mean, Jamie had an incredible year. Um, you know, she asserted her position at the top again. Um, there were several weekends where she just completely dominated, um, you know, the second Spielberg race, Hungary. You know, she really fought off that challenge from Alice. She did an amazing, amazing job throughout. And uh, yeah, that's how she's ended up with her second consecutive title. Alice Powell put up a, a really good fight. I mean, it, it looked, it didn't look as close as it was when you look at the points. She was 27 points back in the end, but you know, really it was a lot closer than that, as Jamie said herself. Yeah, Alice Powell deserves a lot of credit for, for her efforts throughout the season. Definitely. I mean, I, I've spoken to Alice a few times throughout this season and she really wasn't expecting much coming into the season. She didn't have those high expectations after that year out last year um, because of COVID. Um, and Jamie had a Formula Regional campaign in that time. So coming into the season, Alice, I don't think expected, you know, to come in with this amazing amount of success. She led the first weekend of the season. Um, she took that, that landmark victory at Silverstone, which she was said was, you know, unforgettable, her home race. Um, her family were all there, you know, it was a really amazing weekend for her. Um, and yeah, you know, she came into the last weekend of the season and unfortunately those issues in qualifying really set her back to the point where Jamie, you know, got started second and from there she she won the, the weekend, she won both races. So, you know, it was a really unfortunate end to the year for Alice, but it will be interesting to see what she does next. Let's talk a little bit more about Jamie Chadwick. I mean, a lot of pressure on her going into this year. Obviously, we didn't race in W Series last year, but going in as the champion carries a lot of pressure. How do you think she, she dealt with that overall? Yeah, she did, she did a fantastic job. I mean, there was all that pressure. There was um, the, the pressure from outside the series. Um, she's, she's the biggest name, really, that, that races in the series. So I think she had that pressure. She had that pressure of it being only the second season of the series and she won the first one so she had a lot of expectations she was far and above the favorite um so i think then having that first weekend where alice completely dominated might have shaken anyone else but jamie just got on with it the following weekend she what you know dominated from start to finish and from then you know the rest of the season was really a tussle between the two of them and jamie's focus and jamie's pace was just incredible and you know, a much deserved second title for her. What do you think gave her the edge in the end? Do you think it was having that championship winning experience or, or was it experience she's had elsewhere, like in Formula Regional? Yeah, I, I think it was probably a combination of the two things. I think Jamie's got a lot more recent experience. Alice had quite a few years um, away from racing. So Jamie's got the Formula Regional campaign behind her. She's done um, other regional series. She's been doing Extreme E. So um, Alice had only really done a, a Formula E rookie test in the past year. So, yeah, Jamie had the edge in terms of experience. And I think that's what makes it even more um, surprising that Alice was so close to her in the end. She's really been a great advert for the series, hasn't he? And she let's let's talk a little bit about some of the drivers that you know, fans wouldn't have maybe heard of. Obviously, we had uh, Nure Marty who finished in fourth place as a rookie, and also Abby Pulling as well. Both coming from F4, Nure coming from Spanish F4, uh, Abby coming from British F4 as well. Both got on the podium as well. How impressed were you with both of them? Oh, hugely. I mean, Norea did a fantastic job. Um, it was her rookie season. She finished fourth. She scored a podium, as you said. Um, she had fantastic pace, and I think she's a really promising prospect for next year. Um, and the same with Abby. You know, she you mentioned that she, she raced in British F4. She unfortunately had to pull out mid-season because of funding issues. Um, but she finished seventh, having competed in only three rounds. She took pole ahead of Jamie in the last weekend, which I think was a massive, massive achievement. Um, you know, she's 18 years old. I think she's a really, really big one to watch for next year. 
And one thing that the W Series did have this year was, of course, an extended calendar, and it was supporting all the F1 races, which put extra pressure on everyone, in including Jamie Chadwick herself. How good do you think that was for the series, and do you think it's something we're going to see continuing into next year? Yeah, absolutely. I think the extended calendar and the support package spot were really, really crucial. I think the first season supporting DTM was a great start for the series, but coming into 2021, on the calendar with F1, you know, it really opens up the series to a bigger audience, um, boosting popularity and viewing figures. And I think, um, you know, having spoken to the CEO, Catherine Bondmuir, she's really, really keen to bring it to even more people, uh, more races, more continents. Um, there are, you know, big things on the horizon for W Series, I think. And supporting F1, one thing it did lead was a, a open up a big debate in terms of sausage curves at the final round. Abby Eaton had that terrifying incident which led to uh, huge injuries for her. Just tell us a little bit more about how you think that maybe impacted the sport as a whole. Yeah, I mean, Abby's incident was awful and, you know, wish her a speedy recovery. Um, she suffered two fractured vertebrae from the sausage curves at turn 15. Um, and so did Christian Weir, an American F4 driver. Very similar incident, same weekend. Um, so, it, and Fabian Volvand as well during the race also came into contact with them. So it really raises questions about if they're necessary and, you know, should those sausage curbs be there? Um, you know, Sebastian Vettel said that they, they, those injuries were unnecessary. Um, those curbs have been responsible for a number of incidents. And Abby said that they were ridiculous. So I really think it's something that needs looking at. Um, they, they removed the curbs before the F1 race. And I think that they really need to have a look for next year at where those curbs are and how they're going to prevent more incidents like this from happening. And of course, shortly after at Monza, there was a similar incident in, in the Formula Regional European Championship as well, which again sparked even more debate. Let, let's look a little bit ahead to next year. What do you think we can expect from the W Series going into 2022? Uh, I think 2022 is going to be another great season. I think the, the, the issue maybe will be drawing people in without the likes of Chadwick, who, as she said, is, is unlikely to return. Um, Alice Powell has said similar. So... Um, keeping that momentum without those kind of star names is something that the series really needs to look at. Um, but I think with, you know, the calendar is yet to be announced, but with a, with a bigger calendar, staying on the support package with F1, I think that the series has really got potential with new names like uh, Abby Pulling and Nerea Marti and Fabienne Volvend. I think that there's the potential there to keep growing that series and produce, you know, in essentially the next Jamie Chadwick. So I think it's got a really promising future next year and I'm excited to see what happens. Before we talk about what Jamie Chadwick might go on to next, I just want to bring in a quote that we had from uh, Michelle Mouton, who talked a little bit about the prize for uh, W Series. So uh, this is what she said. When you are in a preview to the F1 races in what I call a parade, it is nice to see women driving around. But if you look at the time and what they are able to do, it is not enough. So uh, she's calling out for obviously more track time, but also for a prize to jump into an F3 car as well. Jamie Amy Chadwick would be perfectly placed for that. Do you, I know she gets a half a million dollars to spend on a, a racing career, but do you think there needs to be a more a more of a, an entry for for the champion to to progress into F three? Yeah, definitely. I think that there needs to be more help from elsewhere in the feeder series pyramid. I think um, it's W series is fantastic, and what it's doing is fantastic, creating all these opportunities. But there needs to be clear progression for those drivers there needs to be a way of them moving up and that the onus for that is on w series but it is on the other series as well helping to integrate those drivers and i think you know that half a million dollars is great but it's not going to really get you very far in terms of f3 or f2 so i think the fia discussing you know the champion getting a seat is great and i think that that would be a massive help um, helping those drivers move up the pyramid because otherwise you've got W Series as a kind of standalone um, series. You need that integrating, you need those opportunities to move forward um, and the FIA really, I think, needs to get involved in doing that. 
It would, you know, it would be great for a team, you know, one of the bigger teams to come forward, maybe someone like Trident or Prima and offer a seat. I mean, 500,000, you're still you know, a quarter of a million short, aren't you, of, of a seat in F3. Uh, let's finish the chat then by talking a little bit about Jamie Chadwick. Where does she go next? I know there was calls for her to potentially move stateside and do something like Indy Lights. What do you think she's going to do next? Well, the, there was the discussion about her moving to the US. I can see her staying here, uh, you know, moving into something like WEC, I think is more likely, uh, which with the Richard Meal racing team she tested with, um, as Alice did in Bahrain um, last month. So I can see her moving into something like that more than I can see her moving to the US. But I think W Series has given her that profile um, to, to open up those doors and open up those opportunities. Um, You've seen people like Jess Hawkins move into a, uh, an ambassador role with Aston Martin F1. Um, Jamie and Alice testing for Richard Meal in WEC. Um, two of the W Series Academy drivers got F3 tests. So the series is opening those doors. And I think it will be really interesting to see where Jamie goes next, um, as well as her extreme uh, career, which she's been pursuing as well. Uh, yeah, even something like that, getting the top three into the Richard Mill team as, as a support car for the main team, for example. But you have to say, overall, W Series is in a very good place, isn't it? In just its second year, it's doing massive things for the sport. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Catherine and her team have done such a fantastic job. They've, in, in essentially two seasons, this, the series has gone from supporting DTM to supporting F1. There's huge popularity, there's huge viewing figures. And I think with the help of people like David Coulthard, who's been a massive supporter of the series, um, you can really see that it's going to keep building that momentum. And I think the opportunity to move up into something like F3 would be another really big draw for the series. Well, Megan, thank you very much for joining us. I think the fact that we can sit here and speak for as long as we have about W Series alone says it all, doesn't it? But uh, thank you very much for your time and for your input on Autosport throughout the year. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thanks to Megan White for joining me today. I'm Chris McCarthy. Join us again here on Motorsport TV Live for more season reviews and roundups. Bye for now.